Welcome back. We have the uh, Iowa State University Cyclones with us, number two in the East Regional. They are the Big 12 Conference Tournament Champions, and they will play South Dakota State tomorrow at 6.35 p.m. The men's basketball con contact is Ryan Workman. He's around. We'll have the head coach up here next. On the dais, we have Taman Lipsy, Keyshawn Gilbert, Robert Jones. We'll go right to questions. Thank you. Right on the aisle, thank you. Taman, question for you. So being from Ames and coming to this tournament and watching these guys like Monte play growing up and now you being that guy, what's it like? It's amazing. Uh, I kind of just take moments to soak it all in and uh, just enjoy the moment and enjoy the experience with my teammates and coaches. and. Um, just understanding how big of an accomplishment it is to just get here and then understand that we're trying to do more than uh, just get, get here, really. So, uh, For Keyshawn, you obviously won Big 12 Most Outstanding Player in the tournament. What was working for you so well in those three games? i say just, just making the right play at the end of the day. You know, my teammates haven't trusted me. Uh, us playing for each other. Um, and just us feeding off our feeding off of our uh, defense. On the aisle, thank you. Uh, for any of you guys, um, Coach Otzelberger has done a great job of bringing in transfers every year, and you guys gel so well. How does that happen? And how do you guys how are you guys able to play so well on the court and have the success you've had with a lot of new guys each year? Robert, go ahead. Uh, yeah, he just, uh, it's a credit to him, credit to the coaching staff. He recruits great guys with great characters. And uh, this is a bunch of guys on this team this year that want to gel with each other. Uh, the togetherness is a huge part of the team this year. and It's one of our staples as a program. So probably just a credit to him and who he brings in. And then just a credit to all the people that are on the team, just being great character guys who want to gel together. All right, before we take this question, let me remind you, you cannot tape these proceedings with your cell phone or any other device. Please adhere to the rules. Thank you. Go. Hey, guys. Welcome to uh, Omaha. Uh, defense may not be quite as flashy as some teams that score 90 points a game, but what has defense done for you this particular season? We'll start with Taman and just go down the line. Go ahead. Yeah, defense is our number one focus on the court. and. Uh, obviously, we, we translate that into our offense, and uh, that helps us to score with fast break points and things like that. But um, just taking pride in our defense and uh, knowing that not all teams like to play defense, but we're one of those teams that, that enjoys it, and we like to get after people and uh, make it harder for them. Uh, kind of building off what you said, just taking pride in it, um, knowing we can win ways on the offensive end and defensive end is a great thing that we have. And, um, yeah, just. He said. He said most of. Uh, I like the. I like the quote the best that says defense wins championships, uh, and I like that because uh, even on a even on a night where the ball's not falling for you on the offensive end, as long as you can continue to get stops on the defensive end, you'll end up winning the game. Because if they can't score, you'll win the game. Because eventually you'll make a shot. Front row. For either of you two guards, when you think back to the beginning of the season to where you guys are at now, how much of the two of you together kind of evolved your games to play off of each other effectively? Keyshawn, start us with. I mean, I feel like both of us are pretty unselfish guards. You know, we want to see our teammates eat. We want to eat at ourselves. So feeding off each other, that's, that's easy because I like to see him make shots. He likes to see me make shots. So it just it just gelled pretty good. Yeah, I'd say... I mean, we just spent a lot of time together. We were roommates in the summer for, for a short period of time. So uh, just bonding at the start and uh, just learning off of each other and uh, helping each other when we're on and off the court. And just learning the other person's game has, has gone well throughout the year. And uh, now that we're in postseason, we're, we're like locked in. And uh, we know each other's ins and outs and everything. And that helps us win games. Left-hand side, thank you. The phrase under the radar is sometimes overused, but I feel like in some, in some cases you guys are. I'm not, how well do you think people know you, and how much of a name do you think you can make for Iowa State over the next month? Robert, you're first, and we'll go to Keyshawn next. Uh, 
<clears throat> we like the term under the radar here. We like to be the underdogs. Uh, we like to be the, peop the team that people doubt uh, just because we like to prove people wrong. Um, we like to get after anybody who's put in front of us, and it doesn't matter what the name says on the jersey. We're going to bring, bring physicality, and we're going to bring that toughness to the game that a lot of people haven't seen. Can you repeat that question? Yeah, under, under the radar is kind of overused, but it does feel like it's true for your team. What kind of name do you think you can make for Iowa State over the next month? I mean, I just feel like we could we could prove to everybody that we could really pretty much compete with anybody in the country. And I really wouldn't say it's proving people wrong. I say it's proving our habits and our work and our work that we put in right. Yeah. Anything else for the Cyclones of Iowa State? Okay, gentlemen, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Best of luck tomorrow. Head coach will be up here at 220. Thank you.
as advertised, the head coach of the uh, University Iowa State University Cyclones is with us. We're going to ask TJ to make a statement about his team and about being in Omaha, and then we'll go to questions. Coach? Yeah, it's uh, certainly great to be here in Omaha. Um, just an awesome city, awesome venue, and, and place, uh, place to play. Uh, as far as our team goes, we've got a terrific group of young men, uh, really proud of the hard work that they do and the daily habits uh, that they build throughout the course of the season. And they're a group that is really together and connected. And you get to this time of the year and uh, you want to focus on what's in front of you, and we'll certainly do that. But more than a even any of the games, I'm proud of the young men in our program and how they represent our university. First question is right here on the aisle. Hi, TJ. Mark Ovenden from Dakota News Now in Sioux Falls. Used to cover you there. Um, no, but certainly, would it be fair to say nobody knows how, as a two against a 15, nobody knows how da more than how dangerous South Dakota State could be than you because you coach there? Yeah, they're uh, a very well coached team. Uh, coach Henderson, their staff, do an unbelievable job. Uh, they've won eight games in a row. They're a team that can really space the floor. Uh, they've got veteran guards and guys who have been there um, that have tremendous pride in their program. Uh, they're a group that has played, as I mentioned, their best basketball of late. And you know that the young men uh, in their locker room chose to go there because they wanted to win, that they were competitors. That's why they picked to go there. So um, we are very aware uh, of what a great team they are, how well coached they are. And uh, that's something that you know, certainly doesn't, as having the experience I had there, it's certainly something that you're well aware of. David Brown, Miko Sports, good to see you again, TJ. Um, obviously, the calling card for you guys this season has been defense, second in the nation, and turnovers forced. When you think back to maybe even your first year at SDSU and some of the struggles you guys had defensively, this is a two-parter. Why is your team this year so good? And as a coach, defensively, and as a coach, how have you kind of developed your philosophy to make your players play the best defense possible? Our team has done well defensively because when they came in in June, uh, they're very coachable. They're very receptive to how hard you need to play, how committed you need to be if you want to be successful. Uh, they're very connected so that when something doesn't go our way, somebody else makes up for it. They've got each other's back. Uh, they take a tremendous pride on generating turnovers and turning that into offense for our team. So it's, it's a credit to their character, it's a credit to their effort, and it's a credit to their connectedness because we make mistakes and guys have each other's back and cover up. The second part of your question in terms of evolving your coaching philosophy, for me, you know, very fortunate we came in uh, – with the Jackrabbits at South Dakota State, Coach Nagy had done a terrific job building habits. We were fortunate to have Mike Dom, who was one of the truly elite frontline players in all of college basketball. As we evaluated the program and the great job Coach Nagy had done before, it was important to lean into the strengths that Mike had and to cultivate an offense that allowed him to be at his very best. And so we continued to try to do that while we improved our defense. At Iowa State, when we came in at the onset, it was important that we develop our defense and then cultivate our offense and move it forward with that. So what you've seen is a, a group of guys who do the effort-based things, who embrace the hard work, who love the daily habits, and we're continuing to move forward offensively and fortunate that, you know, felt like last weekend, Thursday, was our best game of the year. Then Friday was our best game of the year. And then Saturday was our best game of the year. So the young men in our program are playing for one another, and we're going to continue to lean in to those strengths on both sides of the basketball as we move our program forward. Right here on the inside aisle, then we go there. Matt Zimmer, Sioux Falls Live. TJ, um, what was your reaction when you found out who you were playing? Was there a sense of, hey, this will be fun, I'll get to see some old friends, or was there a little bit of... Oh, boy, now I have to answer a bunch of questions about playing South Dakota State. No, I knew I'd get to see you, Zim, which was a huge highlight for me. But, um, look, at, at the end of the day, 
tremendous gratitude and thankfulness to Justin Sell and the opportunity that, that he gave uh, for my family and I to lead the Jackrabbits program. Uh, Eric Henderson's been one of my best friends on earth for 20 plus years. Had opportunity to coach you know, Brian Peterson um, at Iowa State and recruit him there and, and have tremendous confidence and belief in him. So there's a lot of people that we really care about. Uh, there's a lot of gratitude and thankfulness that we have. At the same time, uh, the group that we have and what we've invested in our team, they're focused. And we have a focus on the opportunity that's in front of us. And at 6.35 p.m. tomorrow, uh, we're going to aim to be at our very best. So certainly appreciative uh, of the experiences and a lot of great friends, uh, but fortunate to be coaching a group that has the focus and determination that our group does to be ready to be at our best tomorrow night. Hey, TJ, um, in your time here at Iowa State, you've done a great job of bringing in transfers and getting them to gel and play pretty quickly and have success doing that. What's the secret formula, how you've been able to do that with a lot of guys that haven't seen each other until each year playing with each other? Our coaching staff does a phenomenal job evaluating the character uh, of the young people that we bring into our program. It's really important to me that uh, everybody understands on the way in uh, what the standards, the discipline, accountability will be on a daily basis and that they will be held to that every single day. Our program's not for everybody. Uh, we're not a program that, uh, you know, as the transfer portal opens, there's not tens and 20 and hundreds of guys that we look at. We're very specific in the work habits we look for. We look for young people that have handled adversity well. Uh, we look for young people that really want to develop each and every day. Um, and so I think when you bring in the right people and you hold them to the standards, and then they hear from those that have been here that it works because it worked the year before and it's going to work the next year, now you start to have you know young men in your program who are helping lead that cause and that charge. So we've just been fortunate to evaluate the character and the work habits of the guys that we bring in, and we'll continue to be very mindful of that. You know, we're not we're not a program that sells a whole lot of fake dreams or um, makes promises. It's it's more about do the hard work, show up every day, be a great teammate, uh, put yourself in this process, and, and challenge yourself to be your best in all areas every day. And we'll continue to find those guys that want to be part of it and be successful with them. We are under five minutes to go. We have two questions up. Go, please. Hey, Coach, I wanted to ask you about two mentors that you worked for. They're both in the NCAA tournament, um, Fred Hoiberg and Greg McDermott, what you learned from them. And then the second question is, I don't think you coached him, but Baylor Shireman is somebody you recruited to SDSU. Five years later, has he become the player that you, you thought he was going to become when you recruited him? Yeah, um, first with, with Greg, a um, lot of gratitude to Coach McDermott. Uh, he had recruited me out of high school, was the first coach that – uh, recruited me my sophomore year of high school and uh, fortunately he probably had somebody on his staff that that told him better so that he didn't make the recruiting mistake and bring me to play for him at Wayne State um, but Greg's meant a lot to me he's given me a lot of opportunities I worked his camps when he was at Northern Iowa um, he's continued to to be a close friend and somebody that you know he believed in me and gave me a chance to come be an assistant at Iowa State uh, far before my resume ever warranted an opportunity as such. So very grateful to him. In terms of Coach Hoiberg, um, you know, we were just texting even yesterday. Um, again, you know, Fred is extremely intelligent, offensive basketball mind, a guy that very cerebral, um, gets his teams to play with purpose, share the basketball, play for one another. Um, so learned a tremendous amount. And we're still close friends today as well. So both of those guys uh, mean a great deal to me, and I'm very appreciative to them for what I learned and then also for them giving me the opportunities as a coach to grow and continue to develop. Uh, with Baylor, um, certainly saw something special in him. His ability to pass the basketball uh, and competitive spirit are, are really at a high level. And yet at the same time, I'll give Coach Henderson a lot of the credit. He did the majority of the legwork recruiting him. Uh, identifying him and evaluating his his abilities certainly we're excited to to have him uh, be able to come play for us um, would have loved the chance to coach him and uh, proud of him on how he's continued to work and all the successes that he's had because I know he's he's dedicated himself and he's really worked for it Matt Mims was 
kind of the last holdover here from the guys that you recruited to play at South Dakota State. Will that have a big smile on your face tomorrow when he takes the floor to see him get this chance in his last year? Yeah, I'm really, really proud of Matt. I mean, that first year he came in and redshirted for us, and we knew that he was an energy giver. He was, uh, you know, as, as, a, as a point guard or a lead guard, he's one of those guys that makes everybody around him better, and he just knows how the game's supposed to go. Uh, he's a terrific competitor. He's a phenomenal young man. So it was an honor watching him pour into his teammates every day to be there on that journey with him and then for him to continue to have this, this experience, <laughs> excuse me, and to go out, you know, having this opportunity in his last season, really happy for him. Back row in the left, thank you. Hey TJ, Peter Burnett, Daily Nine Parale here in Council Bluffs. Question about the fan environment that you expect. I know one of the phrases that's been thrown around is Hilton West. And I know the, the Cyclone fan presence was, was huge down in Kansas City. Can you just talk about the impact that that has and what you expect from, from the Cyclones faithful? Yeah, I mean, it's truly amazing. You know, to be a Cyclone every day is, is very humbling because you know that the passion, enthusiasm, investment that our fans make every single day, uh, it's inspiring. It elevates our team to play at higher levels. To be able to play in Hilton Coliseum, the truly best home court atmosphere in all of college basketball, with such passionate fans, um, allows our guys to <laughs> accomplish things that they're able to do because of that enthusiasm, that passion, that spirit. To have uh, our fans show up for us in Kansas City the way that they did last weekend uh, was something I'll never forget. Um, the term Hilton South almost cheats what an amazing atmosphere and how much our fans showed up for us and how thankful we were um, each and every single night. And that last night was, was phenomenal. So um, we know that they really care. We know that we've got a special team. Um, we know that's been a winning combination for us this year when we've had our fans behind us, our guys at their best. And so excited whether the term is Hilton West, I, I don't know. Uh, but what I do know is really fortunate to have the best fans in all the country and going to be excited tomorrow night to come out and see the support that we have behind us. Coach, thank you very much, and best of luck tomorrow. We have Cyclones and Jackrabbits tomorrow at 635. Up next is the Drake Bulldogs, student-athletes at 250.